Welcome back to Grassroots Footy. A lot to get through. Time to get to club announcements. Lisa Wright joins us. Lisa, you've got a special press announcement that um, has to be read. Yes, I do. And I'm actually going to read this word for word, so please bear with me. Um, the Executive Committee of the South Australian Amateur Football League last night at a board meeting uh, terminated Mr Mark Shadiak's employment in the position of Chief Executor, Executive Officer, effective Monday 11th of July. The Executive Committee at the same time also approved the appointment of Mr Grant Goodall as the Interim Chief Executive Officer up until the 30th of September 2011. Mr Goodall comes with a wealth of experience in working in management positions within not-for-profit organisations and is currently the Chairman of the Harness Racing uh, Association of South Australia. Um, Gino Capogreco said that Mr Goodall will be undertaking a review of all amateur league operations during his appointment uh, and the Executive Committee looks forward to the outcomes of the review. It is envisaged that the recommendations will drive the league's agenda for future years. Um, that is signed by Gino Capagreco, uh, and I think what we might do is, is have uh, Mr Goodall on the show next week for a chat. Um, so moving on from that, uh, we'll go on to some milestones. And um, having been on the show for a sort of few years, it's, um, it's sort of like watching kids grow up when you sort of see some of these milestones. And I think probably two, maybe almost three years ago, I actually announced this guy playing his, his 50th game, which you sort of think, uh, but he's actually the first, uh, first guy at Blackfriars to achieve 100 games. So Blackfriars oh, well only done. six years old. Well done to Mickey Spry. Um, I call him the Jack Russell because he's small and feisty and he yaps a lot. Um, but he... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mickey, if you're watching. Um, he becomes the first player to reach 100 games. Play, has played in both premiership sides in 06, 07, two times best and fairest winner. Um, wasn't even an old scholar, just came at the foundation of the club with a mate that was an old scholar in a state ever since. Um, and uh, he's just so highly regarded by the boys at Boss, it's not funny. So um, well done, Mickey, and good luck for this week, mate. Um, also, West uh, Woodville South past Players Day this week at Ledger Road from 12.15, so get down there. Um, and also, we're going to have something a bit different tonight. We've got Matty Hollenby coming in from Glenunga to do the Div 6, 7 previews. And we'd actually like just to get a few more players onto the show to give uh, to give their thoughts. So um, if you think you've got what it takes to, to sit here and uh, and pick the winners, give us a yell on grassrootson44 at gmail.com and, uh, and we'll see if we can get you on the show. All right, time to have a look at Division 2. Let's get down to it. Macca and Lisa Athelston, they're in 10th spot. Adelaide Uni in 4th. It's at the Max Amber Sports Field. Athelston have won their last two, claimed the scout of Spock, of course, two weeks ago. So they're in pretty good form. Macca, they defeated your boys on the weekend. Adelaide Uni, they've lost their last two. So, oh, I don't know. Can Athelston turn it around? Oh, look, Athelston... Uh... Look, if Uni aren't on, the, on their medal, they will get beaten by Athelstan. Uh, Athelstan are on a little bit of a roll at the moment. Yeah, can I they think get three in a row? Can Athelstan get three in a row? Maybe so, but uh, I think even before their two wins, I think they'd led probably in their, their last four games before that. They'd led at half-time in all of them games. So uh, their form is starting to stack up a little bit. And I uh, got a first-hand look at them last week. Uh, uh, Tomo kicked five, uh, had a bit of a day out, and uh, Baker got four as well. Um, look, Uni are still, still travelling nicely. Um, there's not been much said about them. Um, Mulvey Hill kicked four for him last week, and you know Trimmers uh, just seems to be going along a little bit quietly this year, as they as opposed to what they were like last year. And I think uh, we might have tipped a draw here. Right? What about a draw? draw? You tipped a draw last week, and you got two, so you reckon this one will be the draw? I think this Lisa? will be the draw. Well, I was out at uni uh, on Tuesday night, as we'll see in the next segment, but. Um, Uni, uh, I was speaking to Cyril of Cyril and the Sea bombs If you give long answers, Divi 5 won't get any airtime. OK, tonight. he was just saying <laughs> that they've lost the equivalent of two or more teams this week, and that's in all divisions. So um, that, that uni sort of holidays thing I was talking about might just come into fruition. But they, tra they trained well, so I'll actually still pick uh, uni in the A grade. All right. Old Iggy's, they're in fifth spot. They're up against Modbury in eighth. It's at Hunter Park. The Old Iggy's have found a bit of form. They struggled a bit after the break, but it looks like they might be back. They beat Port District, who have been in good form. Uh, Modbury lost to uni by 77 points, so well, Modbury could be on the end of a big loss. Old Iggy's are starting to look good again. Yeah, look, Old Iggy's looked one by two goals last week and starting to find a bit of touch. Alessandrini kicked four um, and has been a regular goal kicker all year for him. Uh, the coach, Peddler, he's been the best player, so he's obviously said, follow me, this is how it's done. Uh, Janetsky and big Joey Digan um, was in their best players as well. And there's a little uh, bloke that's always yapping and carrying on as well at your heels as uh, Josh Carr was oh, in the best players as well. Uh, Modbury, look, uh, Modbury wouldn't be too happy because their, their season's been pretty good so far. But to be, you know, beaten like they did last week, they won't be real wrapped with that. 
No, uh, Iggy's will we'll come back, absolutely. Iggy's all right. Walkerville there in third spot. Port District's in sixth. It's at Walkerville. Walkerville coming to this game feeling really good about themselves. They had a big win over the top-placed Ross Trevor. Port District's were in good form. Old Iggy's got them last weekend. What do you think, Mac? Uh, look, Walkerville um, travelling along nicely. Uh, Fisher kick four. Barry, Clone and Eagle to win their best players. Uh, Walkerville are travelling along very nicely and uh, really looking at a top three chance. Uh, Port District's, a lot hangs on this game for them because uh, there's still a chance to make the five, and if they lose, it's going to make it pretty tough for them. Yeah, they actually play the top four sides in the last five rounds, so it will be a tough trot. I'll pick Walkerville at home, I think. All right, Prince Alfred, they're up against uh, you. Of course, Prince Alfred are in seventh spot. Paynham Norwood Union are in ninth spot. It's at Park Nine. Ninth spot, Park Nine. Could Nine fall into place, Macker, and be lucky for Paynham? I spoke to Rocky uh, Butterworth today. He said three more players were injured, like you. They're playing a lot of young kids at the moment, so it will be a battle of the young kids to see who gets on top. Yeah, look, uh, it's look, it's a huge game for our club because uh, we lose this one and I think that spells the end of any chance to, to get out of the, the relegation zone. So um, it'll be a very big game for us. Uh, Prince Alfred, look, they've still got their finals hopes alive as, uh, as well. So uh, it's it's got a fair bit of importance for them. Ryan Byrne kicked seven for them last week and was their best player. He's a big unit. Uh, Rogan, Fry and Rawson were also the best. We had got Jolly back for his first game in six weeks last week and he kicked three and uh, got a little bit weary towards the end but he was terrific and Tyson Redetti and Louis Martin found some real good form as well so uh, uh, we hope those blokes will stand up on the weekend and uh, get us over the line. That's the uh, the death march. Oh, the death march. <laughs> for the old. But who's at the, the death march for? It is the death march unfortunately uh, for my former club. Oh, I thought you might have said for the coach. No, <laughs> and possibly for the coach. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. No, not that I've heard any rumours. <laughs> um, no, look, I, I will do think that uh, PAC will, will get up in this one. All right, the match of the round, no doubt about it. St Peter's are up against Ross Trevor. Second play first, it's at Caterer Oval. Spot come into this one on the back of a win over PAC last week by 33 points, while Ross Trevor dropped the game to Walkerville by 48 points. So... Ross Trevor were held to only five goals. Would be a big concern for their Macca coming into this game. Yeah, look, uh, St Peter's uh, best is good enough. Um, and uh, Ross Trevor might be in for a little bit of a shock. Uh, this is the top of the table clash. If Spock can win this game, that gives him a sniff at uh, getting to the top. top. So, uh, you know, Cantwell's uh, kick three. Uh, Thomas, Brad Thomas, that is very good player for him. Uh, Roberts and Wilcox. Uh, for Ross Trevor, Gilbert, um, Medhurst, O'Malley and Dawes were their best players. Uh, Ross Trevor uh, didn't give a yelp last week, so uh, they'll be breathing fire. But uh, I think this is a dangerous game, another danger game for him. I think St Peter's might get over him. Yeah, it could go either way. I I'm probably tending to go with you on that one, actually, Macca. Yes, Bob. Oh, thank you, Liz. All, All right, right, time to have a look at our complete home transformation competition. Three $5,000 outdoor kitchens to be won. Of course, one goes to the best player in the amateur footy league, be it Division 1 right through to Division 7. Two other ones to be won, two other ones to be won, sorry. Mackie, your club needs one, we know that at Paynham <laughs> Northern Union. 50 words or less why your club should win an outdoor kitchen, and you can win that outdoor kitchen in the supporter prize, or in 500 words or less why your club should win the outdoor kitchen. So two magnificent outdoor kitchens to be won thanks to Complete Home Transformation. One, 50 words or less why you should win an outdoor kitchen. And the second one, of course, 500 words or less why your club should win that outdoor it's kitchen. It's a great prize, isn't it? You know, oh, it's you, fantastic. You, your, club sh your club should be really putting in to try and get I that. Know, this is not what you want to hear, but I woke up the other night and I was thinking, I wonder if I could write a poem that would win me that and I could put that in for <laughs> Payne of Norwood <laughs> Union. So Thanks, uh, there I was at two o'clock in the morning trying to compose a poem on how to win an outdoor kitchen from Complete Home Transformation. It's time to have a look at Division 5 now. Plimpton, they're in third spot. Hope Valley are in sixth. It's at Plimpton. Hope Valley had a three-point win last weekend. Plimpton played in that famous draw. Now, Lisa, I normally want to ask you this, but Macca, playing in a draw as opposed to a three-point win, which one's the more draining? Oh, look, uh, the draw is a, a nothing. It's like um, it's an empty feeling. Mm. Um, so, you know, as, as opposed to a three-point win, you know, that's this jubilation, you know, the... the uh, the energy just so the kicks nothing, in. So the nothing feeling, though, is it emotionally drained? Does it make you flat? Is it um, hard to come back next week? Yeah, I, no, I just think it's just one of those things. You go, well, what can you do? you just got to go off the track and you've got one point, I suppose, and get on with it. I don't know about emotionally draining. All right. Yeah, Put it is draining. Hope Valley. Well, <laughs> um, they're going to start off favourites. There's no doubt about that at home, Plimpton. Um, 
But uh, yeah, the Red Dogs, they certainly love a, uh, love a draw. Um, Loz Lawrence De Palma, our little pocket rocket, he was our saving grace last week, he kicked our winning goal with 10 seconds or 20 seconds to go. Um, look, I'll call it a close one because we only had uh, a one point difference last time. So um, hopefully it goes our way again. All right, we're into time on two minutes to go. Woodville South, they're in ninth spot. North Haven in fourth, it's at Rexall Oval. Both sides need to win, but only one can. So uh, the Cats need it to get out of the bottom two and uh, North Haven need it to stay in the five. So Adam Clifford playing well, um, but uh, as we said, Woody South have got their past players day and there's nothing like a past players day crowd to get them over the line. I think the Cats might sneak in here. Yeah, look, I think the Cats will win. It's interesting, there's only two and a half wins that separate fourth and tenth in this competition. It's, uh, it's the competition of death. Uh, we won and we went down a spot on the ladder. Who does right. that? Lockleys, <laughs> they're in 10th spot. Adelaide Lutheran are in 8th. <clears throat> it's at Lockleys. Both teams coming to this one with a loss from yeah, last weekend. Yeah, now I keep saying it, and this is so applicable in Div 5, I keep saying every game is a must win, and it's probably um, no more relevant than this particular game here. Um, a loss to either side puts them in serious relegation danger. Um, in fact, a loss to the Demons will probably put a nail. I'll be doing the death march to them too, I think. Um, Ty Allen was actually kept very quiet last week by our own Jordan Pepper. Well done, Pep. Um, but he'll be keen to put in a good performance again this week um, but he'll I guess expect some close attention again no doubt <sighs> hard one you'd almost pick Lockleys at home just because it's such a danger game for them yeah I'm with you I, th I think home's the the go. All right, Brahma Lodge there in fifth spot. Rosewater in seventh at Brahma Lodge. Yeah, Rosewater uh, didn't take to being in ninth spot too well. They, uh, Cohen Matter came back from suspension. Uh, and the return of the uh, the great yet old Brad Horsell from ankle surgery for the uh, for the Bulldogs. So, um, but their improvement certainly showed with those two uh, admissions there. Um, look, the Lodge and, Lodges win last week over Salisbury West saw them sneak back into the five by 0.08 of a cent percent. So that's how far in front they are of us. Um, look, this this game will be a beauty um, with both sides putting it on the line. Brahma Lodge really want this. I think they'll get it. Um, I'm going for Rosewater. All right, match of the round. Salisbury West there in second spot. West Croydon in first spot. It's at Salisbury Downs Oval. Yep, winner all but secures top spot. Secures a home final. Um, look, Tigers, uh, Dean Steele, fantastic little player. Um, he'll be relying on them to bounce back from their loss last week. Um, however, the, the great Jeb Stubberfield, uh, and he's been going around for a while, returned for the Hawks last week. Now, in their forward line is the likes of Bryant, Woodcock, Anderson, who kicked seven goals last week for the Hawks, plus Jeb Stubberfield. It's going to be... Um, very hard for Westies to actually match up on them and very easy to see why the Hawks are Premiership favourites at this point, so you'd have to pick the Hawks. Uh, I'm going for the home team. All right, time for us to take a break. Still lots to come on Grassroots Footy. Stay with us.